can be done and people to be reached. Well, one of my friends is a linguist in Paris, and he told me that the way they say, one of the ways they say, I miss you, is they have a term, they have a, they have a way of saying it. And the, the three words, tu me mon. Now, this is good. Tu me mon. And I'm not, fr does anybody speak French? Does anybody speak French? Nobody speaks French. What y'all doing in high school? All right. Tu me mon. Let's do it. Tu me mon. Would you say it? Tu me mon. It's French for I miss you, but it means more than I miss you. What it means is you are missing from me. You see that? You are missing. I wonder if Adam ever felt his rib when he didn't see Eve. Where is she? As humans, when we lose somebody or when they go away, sister told me she hadn't been here in 10 years, but she came here tonight. Do you remember me? Of course I remember you. Something that we, when somebody we love, they're missing. You are missing. When the Lord sent me to Alabama, I said goodbye to my family and friends, put my books and my clothes in my car, said goodbye to my mother. Didn't know if I'd ever see him again. And I went down there, and I was ready to die in Alabama because the Lord had sent me there. I got married to Sandra down there. They had just lynched a man, and we were next up. We were special. <laughs> But God protected me. He kept me. And maybe almost two years later when she finally saw me again, when she, the last time she had seen me, I was single, doing the work for the Lord, very energetic, just doing all the things I could do. But when she saw me again, I had flown back. I would made my way to Pasadena. My brother drove my mother to pick me up to see me. And when my mother saw me, I think she realized I could have died out there. And that now I'm married and I've got a, a child and, and life has changed. And, and she was in the car in the seat behind me. And it's like my mother could not hardly believe her eyes that I was still alive. She, I, she was reaching over from the back seat to feel my arms like, like she had missed me. And it's like she wanted to make sure I was real, that this, this is not a dream. That, that I flew in last night to LAX. My older daughter who lives in California and her husband met me. She sat in the back seat. And my daughter was reaching over the back seat, touching my arm like this was almost she missed me. Y'all hear what I'm saying? We have the capacity to, in death, we miss our friends. We miss our loved ones. We miss them. When I was a little boy, before I went to kindergarten, I remember my dad shaving and me watching him shave. Well, my dad's been dead since 2010, but where I shave, I got a picture of my dad's obituary. So when I shave, I get to look over and see. And the reason is because I miss him. Tu me manque. You are missing from me. There is no me without you. I'm not complete without you. Let me, let me change it up. How many people have seen the New York skyline? All right, I didn't live in New York, but I've been in New York. And there's this amazing and interesting skyline, but after 2001, the skyline has changed. And for years, I could not hardly see the skyline of New York without feeling deeply in my heart something. It's missing. It's not there. Anybody remember the crocodile hunter? Steve Irwin? And he passed away. He died. We had a little girl who's grown up, and the little girl said something that I want you to hear regarding her father. She said, you never actually move on from it. It's like losing a part of your heart. And when you've lost that, you never get it back. Part of you will always be missing. I understand that we were made for God, but until we're in a right relationship with God, something's always going to be missing. Something's going to be incomplete in our heart. And I think the truth of the matter is we could say, God, I am not complete without you. Come on, help me with that. Say, I am not complete 
Jesus one day sat among people that would be considered immoral. They would be considered immoral and moral failures. They would be considered people that are, are discarded by society. They would be avoided. They would be considered reprobates or something reprehensible. And if you were a man of God, what in the world would you be doing sitting with people like that? And they criticized Jesus for sitting with people like that. And what Jesus did was he, he responded to them knowing their thoughts. He responded to them. Now, some people are going to be so defensive they can't hear you. You just say, this is your problem. And so Jesus was so wise to instead say, this is your problem, you so-and-so. He would tell them a story. He'd tell them a story about birds. He'd tell them a story about flowers. And in this case, he told them a story about value. He said there was a lady that had 10 pieces of silver. And, and you know how that is when your wife loses a piece of silver. And she doesn't say, well, oh, so what? She values that silver, so she lights something up. And she looks around, and she finds it. when she finds it, she's happy that she found it. But he didn't leave it at that. Some of them probably came from, from shepherding households and farms. And, and so he said, well, there's a man that had 100 sheep. And he said he lost one of those sheep, and he didn't say, oh, well, so what? He valued that sheep, and what he did was he made sure the 99 were safe, and then he went looking for that one. It was missing from him. And he didn't say, oh, well, the lion's going to eat better tonight. No, 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 no. He said, that's my sheep, and I'm not giving up that easy. That's my sheep, and I'm going looking for my sheep. That's my sheep, and I'm not laying my head down on my pillow while it's in danger. I got to go find my sheep. And when the shepherd found the sheep, he put him on his arms, put him around his neck. And can you see the man have a little skip in his step, coming around telling his neighbors, come on and rejoice with me. Looky here. Look what I found. It, was, it didn't die. He's coming home with me. Can you see the joy and the value the shepherd had on the sheep? Look at here. My lost sheep is found. Oh, bless his name. But they still might not have got, got it. So he told them one more story. He said, he said, there was this man, and he was a prosperous man. The man had two sons. You know the story. And this son wanted to go have another kind of life. He didn't want to stay with his dad. He didn't value his father's presence. What he heard was stories of women and a wild life he couldn't live at his daddy's farm. And can you imagine someone getting that in their mind, a young man and his hormones, and getting that in his mind while he's out there raking and hoeing and plowing and, and working season after season, thinking about what's out there. You know, when lust is conceived, it brings forth sin. There are some things when they get in your mind, you ought to get them out of your mind. Look, I told ministers, I trained ministers, I said, look, I don't trust my own flesh. Why should I trust anybody else's? I try not to put myself in that situation. You do well not to put yourself in that situation. That young man had a fascination for something that wasn't with his father. Until he said, look, Pops, I got to go. Please, give me my stuff. Just, I, and and the, the man was just so, so kind. He loved his son, and he let him go. Did you notice? The woman looked for the coin, and it was just a coin. The shepherd looked for a sheep, but ultimately it was just a sheep. That father loved his son, but he didn't go after him. Why? Why did he not go after his He loved his son. It's, it's going to be evident in the story. Because that son had it in his mind. He wanted to be somewhere else. And if the, if the father had taken all his employees and forced that boy back, that was still in his mind, still in his heart. That boy had to learn something the hard way. 
And trust me, things got hard for that boy. And so as Jesus is telling the story, these people that are criticizing him for hanging out and being around these people, they would look at as non-belongers and outsiders. And how dare you be with folk like that? How could you be a man of God with folk like that? And he tells about the father who let that son go. And in his wild, wild life, it brought him to such a degraded state till he started looking at what the hogs were eating and it started to look good. Listen, if you're out there somewhere today not living in fellowship with your God, your Father, if you're living out there like that, there are some things that aren't good that may start to look good just because you're in that situation. Oh, bless his name. You can be so desperate till bad stuff looks good. I'm sorry. I want to wind it up and finish it. I'm sorry. I had one of those flashes from being a kid. I wasn't saved all my life, Bishop. I'm sorry. I wasn't saved all my life. I went to see my friend Georgie, he's a Mexican guy, and he had a sister I saw her under, under, under the street light. And I said, Georgie, that's your sister? I started bothering Georgie. I said, look, Georgie, I, 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 you need to bring your sister over. I need to see her, you know. Well, he brought her over one day, but it was daylight, but I saw her. I wasn't saved. I wasn't right. I know it was shallow. And I, I know. But I saw her in the daylight. And when I saw her in the daylight, it was so different than what she looked like under that street light. It was almost like, Georgia, please, take her home. Go. <laughs> True confession is good for the soul, they say. This father sat there, loving his son the whole time, missing his son the whole time. And you might say, well, how do you know he missed him? How do you know he felt that? I'll tell you how I know. Because the way Jesus tells the story, one day that boy came to himself in such a low state. He said, look, if I could just get to where my daddy is, he doesn't have to make me a son if he would just give me a job. The people that work for my dad, they get to eat. And this is a horrible place. This is not for me. And sometimes you've got to get to a place where you look at all the stuff that you're involved in. You've got to say, this is not for me. This is not what God wants for me. And if you can look around yourself now and say, this is not for me, there's something else you've got to do. You've got to get up from there. Oh, bless his name. That father loved his son, but that boy had to get up from there and decide he was coming back home. Oh, but what a beautiful picture this is to see this old man. Now, I'm wearing glasses. And, uh, you know, one day I was looking in my Bible. One night I was, it was almost like Sandra. What's wrong with these words? I needed glasses. I just needed. But that old guy, I don't think he had any glasses. But can you see the old man, however dim his eyes might have been, maybe sitting on the porch or sitting on a stump and, and maybe the work had to go on, but he's older now. But looking down the road, down the road, you might say this, is a raggedy stranger down the road. And the old man may have looked up and somebody may have pointed him out and from a distance. He could make out that, that shape. He could look at him and say, no, no, that's my son. <laughs> Now, if you're like me and you're getting, I'm, I, I once was young, but now I'm, you know, I don't know how frail that old dude was, but he got his stuff together, and the Bible says he ran. He ran. He ran to where that boy was, and that expressed missing him so wonderfully, and he kissed him, and he kissed him, and he kissed him, and he said wonderful things out of his mouth. This, my son, was dead, but now he's like, he was lost, but he was found and he wanted to celebrate. I want you to stand on your feet for a moment. I'm going to ask you to trust me just for the next one minute. And I want you to close your eyes just for a moment. The word said, because he set his love upon me. Would you just for a moment lift your hands to the Lord? And do that. Just say, Lord, I set my love upon you. Now, if you mean it, say it like you mean it. Say it to the Lord. Lord, I set my love upon you. You put your hands down. Keep your eyes closed. Listen, that is supposed to be you. 
You were made to love him. You were made to worship him. Some of you may be missing in action. But I want to ask you tonight, before we're through, to make a deliberate decision. I want you to deliberately set your affection on the Lord. I want you to deliberately set your love. Say, Lord, I, I, I love you here and now in this place. And, and, and not just in the moment, not just like my jacket, but learn to love him every day. Learn to say no to yourself so you might say yes. Are you with me tonight? Are you willing to do that tonight? There is no question that the great God who made the heavens and the earth loves you. That the great I am that I am that don't need nothing from nobody. Somehow in the heart of God, there's something missing and he's not complete without you. And I want to know if you feel the same way that I, I, I'm not complete without you, Lord. Do you want to set your love upon God tonight? Listen, no matter where you've been, no matter who you've been with, no matter what you've done, no matter what's happened to you, even if you were missing, in this place, God is looking for somebody who's going to care about what he cares about. In this place, God is looking for people who will begin to love what he loves, love people he loves, and love them the way he wants you to love them. God is looking for somebody who will honor all people, insiders, outsiders, them, and us. God is looking for somebody tonight who will give him everything, all of you, without reservation. Give him your willing heart. Give him the yes, even when you feel like saying no. So I want to ask tonight, is that you? If that's you, I want you to say it. Lord, there is no me without you. Now, if you believe that, I'm not going to ask you to the altar right now. If you believe that, I'm going to ask you to take one step. And if you can't step forward, step to the side. If you believe that, take a step. And now, having taken that step, I want you with your own mouth to say those words again. Lord, I set my love upon you. I came here tonight because someone, you needed to say that out of your own mouth. Say it again. Come on, everybody. Lord, I set my love upon you. Say it again. Lord, I set my love upon you. Now, you don't need a cheerleader. You sure don't need me. In your own way, I want you to begin to love on him. Begin to worship him. Begin to express yourself, your love, your appreciation. Oh, Lord, we've missed you. We miss you in our hearts, but we can't live without you, God. Say it in your own way and love him tonight. Come on. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Do you want to come out from where you are? Do you want to set your love on him deliberately tonight? If that's you, don't wait for an altar call. Don't wait for anybody else. Just get yourself down here. Just get yourself down here to express your love, to set your affection, to set your love. If that's you, come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Lord, I want to love you. I may have fallen short. I may have failed you, but you're a forgiving God. You're a loving God. He recognizes those. If you set your love on God, he's going to deliver you. If you set your love on God, he's going to be with you in trouble. Come on, somebody should be here because you're sure enough in trouble. You're in trouble. You need God to stand with you. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. Anybody else? Anybody else? You've been missing, missing, missing. Lord, you are missing from me. Well, now you're going to set your love on him and he won't be missing anymore. He's here right now. He's here to love you and fix what's wrong. He's here to love you and deliver you. He's here to love you and make you safe. He's here to cover you with his feathers. He's here to pick you up, to lift you up, to take you out of that mess. Thank you, Jesus. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord, Jesus, we call your name. Say his name, Jesus. There you go. Come on, brother. You're helping me. Thank you.
Father God, these people that have come, they have come to express themselves deliberately, to say, Lord, I set my love upon you. And Father, I want you to stretch out your hand to these. And as they have responded to your word, I pray that you will fulfill your word and do just what you said and show yourself in my sister's life. Show yourself in my brother's life. Lift them up. Make a way. Be with them in trouble. Be with them, Lord. Deliver them. Honor them. Satisfy them. Fix the situation, God. Work it out. Work it out. Work it out. In Jesus' name. And I thank you today. And I thank you forever. Come on, someone ought to be praising with me. I, I praise you today. And I praise you forever. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on and praise him. 